Hey everybody, the Super Vader 400 here. This is my second review of the movie Masters of the Universe, which came out in 1987 and is based on the He-Man franchise and was released and was it was released shortly after the He-Man franchise started to peak. I think by the time um this movie came out, people were getting to people were more into stuff like Transformers and starting to get into stuff like um Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which came out around this time um i've saw i've seen this film several times and i must say i love this film first of all to e to be even talking about a he-man movie in the 80s automatically earns um my respect and i felt for what they had to work with the but the low budget the cast and everything I thought they did a pretty good job. I would love to see a He-Man movie today made more accurately. But with that being said, yeah, like I said, I, I thought they did a um real good job. I love the casting choices of Dolph Lundgren as He-Man and Frank Langelica as um Skeletor. Dolph Lundgren is not the best actor in the world, but he's an awesome action star. I think he's an awesome name and can truly um carry a um can carry a movie and he looks like he man in my opinion he was the perfect choice for he man frank langelica frank langelica um frank langelica was an awesome choice for skeletor skeletor is one of my favorite th this incarnation of skeletor is one of my favorite movie villains and he delivers some of the most epic and awesome and entertaining and memorable lines i've ever heard um in um movies in um movies and Frank Langella Frank Langella says this is his favorite um this is his favorite role the costume is I love the costume design costume design is phenomenal the um, special effects the special effects in my opinion despite the low budget were done pretty well were, were done pretty well and um the action sequences I love the action sequences in the film the first action sequence when He-Man is fighting a bunch of robots in the beginning in the beginning uh, other than the part where he shoots one of the robots um in the um in the in the balls um that scene was just like he-man the robots were shooting him and he-man was using his sword like a lightsaber and blocking his shots blocking their shots blocking their shots then um i love the um during the um scene where where skeletor's warriors chase um try to retrieve the cosmic key and chase um julie into that um, record place they get into a um he man comes to the rescue and they have a big fight um beast man jumps on he man in an awesome wrestling fight then he man and um blade have an awesome sword fight then one thing i love about the sword fight is that the sword fight unlike in most movies this sword fight was realistic it was pretty it was pretty it was pretty quick it wasn't a long epic battle and I thought the fight choreography was good the guy Anthony Longales I keep forgetting his name I know his the first name is Anthony I keep forgetting his last name but he was the stunt choreographer for, for this um mo for this um movie and he was a stunt double for Frank Langelica as um uh, Frank Langella as Skeletor and um the scenes with him were awesome. And I love the scene where he man grabbed. I think it was, yeah, it was Karg. He grabbed Karg and threw him into um, threw him into Blade. I thought that was awesome. Cool wrestling move right there. So yeah, awesome hand to hand fight choreography. Now I'm gonna talk about the um, the story. In my opinion, is pretty. Is my opinion, the story is pretty damn good for a he man cartoon. Yeah, I know they have to leave due to the budget. They had to leave the world of eternity and go to earth but in my opinion despite doing that in my opinion the movie managed to stay good the human characters on earth weren't annoying at all weren't annoying at all they're not my favorite characters in the film but they weren't annoying at all and and um lubric the cop he, he was pretty he was pretty funny he was pretty funny but um the movie in my opinion still managed to stay good even though they went to um even though they went, even though they were forced to go to Earth, and well, I don't know if this is canon in the He-Man cartoon in the Christmas special, Queen Marlena one time jokingly talks about in the film they meet some kids who are from Earth. They meet some kids who are from Earth, so I guess it is possible for somehow to go from Eternia to the planet Earth. 
So that's why I'm not too mad or offended by that, even though it goes against the source material. And in the cartoon, Queen Marlena mentions Earthlings a lot. So I guess it's not too possible. And then in the next series, the new adventures of He-Man, He-Man was able to go to the future. So I think it would be possible to go to Earth. Go to, go to um, Earth. Anyway, um, the film managed to um, stay good and... Um, story of course he had a story going back to the story yes um the in the beginning skeletor has already seized eternia's eternia's forces took it over took it over it took it over it's up to skeletor it's up to he-man man at arms and tila to repel his invasion um they escape they escape through a portal with the cos with the with a device of power called the cosmic key and um he met and skeletor sends his warriors the Skeletor sends his warriors to track him. Um, like I said, the story was real good despite plot holes. Um, one it includes include one includes is that if you want to use the cosmic key, the He Man has to be further away from it. So why is he having his minions kidnap He Man? That was one thing, but I think it was has to do with Skeletor's ego. Another one was um at the end when Skeletor's and forces are invading Earth. Why is no one, why does no one not notice or come out? Everyone is being quiet while it's happening, but other than that, my opinion, the plot was um pretty good, and I thought it was good enough to make a um sequel, sequel which they didn't do. They instead made another movie called Cyborg. Then um this going to the supporting cast, John Cipher as Man at Arms, he was pretty awesome. His costume is slightly different, is a slightly different color in this um movie, but he reminds me of the Man at Arms from the um. From the um eighties um cartoon. From the eighties cartoon. Um Chessio Fields Ch Chessia Chelsea Fields was awesome as um as Tila. She was like she she was slightly different in both appearance and personality from the Tila of the eighties um of the eighties series. She was more personality wise, she was more like the Tila of the two thousand two um television series and um she wore a giant bodysuit like Luke Skywalker or Jedi instead of the um short short out instead of the normal outfit she wears in the um cartoons. But yeah, she was pretty awesome too. Bad guys were awesome. I love the the, the, the costume and makeup design on Beastman. In my opinion other than the samurai armor that he wears, it looks like it looks like a real life Beastman. Sarad and Karg. I love the makeup effects and costume design on them too. They were also awesome. Blade, as Anthony Longalis as um, Blade. He was um, pretty. Um, he was pretty damn awesome. Um, he was pretty damn awesome too. And so was um, Evil In. This is actually my probably my favorite incarnation of Evil In. Personality and look wise, I prefer her in this movie. Um, movie of course is this movie is quite dark Skeletor accidentally actually vaporized one of his enemies for failure and that was um Sarad would have been cool if they could have it would have been cool if they could have used a sequel and I don't know brought in uh, more familiar characters from the show like from the good guys Stratos Stratos um Kite Fisto uh Manny faces, Manny faces, Ram Man, people like that from the um from the eighties cartoon and from the bad guys, Trap Jaw, Trap Jaw, and maybe Triclops. Skeletor, going back to Skeletor, Skeletor in this film was far more competent. He was actually more closer to Hordak than he was um Skeletor, but like I said, Frank Langelica was awesome. Like I said, this movie when it was released, when it was released, this movie for the most part was a flop. For the most part, was a flop. Um, when it re released and and Canon instead decided to use the budget for this film to release the action John Club Van Damme film Cyborg. But um, yeah. Like I said, I hope someone remakes this today. Today, I'm gonna go closer to the um source material. Alright, Doug, I'm alright, the Super Vader, out.